Hello and welcome to World Plan Day 2022. Today we're going to talk about the new release of Plan, Plan 6. So welcome to Plan 6. First thing, let's talk a bit about Plan. Plan is the leading open source CMS. It's been around for over 20 years. It's written mostly in Python. It's developed and maintained by uh, the Plon community. This community was started by three people uh, from different places. Alan Ranian from Texas, US, uh, Alexander Limi from Norway, and uh, Vidar Anderson. And uh, they worked together to build a new user interface to uh, uh, application server at the time called Zope, more specifically to a framework called uh, CMF. And uh, they started this project 20 years ago. And from there, it grew to become a worldwide and very welcoming community. Uh, the Plon project, the Plon CMS and its content trademark is protected by a foundation based in Delaware in the US called the Plon Foundation. Plon Foundation promotes and protects Plon. First thing you need to know about Plon, Plon is secure, has a, a proven record of security and it's well known for its accessibility. From day zero, thanks to Alexander Limi, uh, we always focus on usability and accessibility. Our solution is being used by governments and NGOs all around the world specifically because of that. And uh, since then, we also focus on being an uh, international solution. So it's possible for you to have multilingual sites like most of the sites in the European Union. One good example is the European Environmental Agency. But besides that, you can all also have sites, uh, your site in your own language. So we have clone sites running in most countries of the, uh, the earth with uh, left to right and right to left uh, languages without any other problems. Also, uh, Plon over the past few years has been focusing in being future proof. First thing is Plon is Python 3 based. So uh, for quite a long time, we've been working with Python 2. Since 2020, we are only Python 3 for the newer releases, specifically Plon 6. We still support uh, Python 2.7 on uh, Plon 5.2, but for every new release, every new package, we are focusing on Python 3 only. Also, we have a, free, a full feature uh, REST API, so you can build your own user interface. You can build your own uh, front-end site with whatever technology you like. It's React, it's Angular, it's Vue.js. It's the next new thing that's happening on uh, on the JavaScript world. Or even you can use Plone as the CMS for your Django projects or for your uh, PHP projects or Ruby projects. It really doesn't matter. You can integrate Plone with whatever solution you want. Besides that, Plon is around. We've been powering sites all over the world for quite a long time. As you can see, these are some of the sites we power at the moment. But uh, we are here to talk about Plon 6. So what's new for Plon 6? First thing, let's talk about support and installation. As I said, we are Python 3 only for, uh, for Plon 6. So, so long Python 2 and thanks for all the fish. Also, we, uh, a long, long time ago, we've built a content type system called Archetypes. I believe it dates back to 2004, 2003, because since my early days in the Plon community, I've been using Archetypes. And now we are uh, retiring it. It's not being ported to Python 3. It's not being ported to Plon 6. But we do have uh, a comprehensive and well-documented uh, uh, story about how you can move 
old archetype to dexterity. That's the new way of creating content types. Also been around since 2010 or 11. So plenty of time to move. Some of the most well-known uh, products using archetypes, they have uh, counterparts in dexterity. One example is Plone Form Gen. Now we have a collective easy form, and there's even a new solution called Collective for, uh, Voto Form Support by Red Turtle. Also, for Plone Sex, everything is dexterity, even the Plone Site root. So you can apply behaviors to that. You can search in the catalog for the Plone Site. You can work in a singular, uh, in a in a unified way for all possible content types you have in your uh, project. Besides that, uh, we've been putting a lot of effort in going to standard ways the rest of the world is working with Python and even projects in general. So first thing is. We are uh, deprecating the universal installer that's been serving us for a long time. With the universal installer, you would also install Python. You would also install every single bit library that you needed. For now, we are uh, providing you first with Docker-based uh, images, images for any content, a container, but we usually say Docker. These are base images you can uh, use to build on top of it. We have images for the database with uh, plone-zio. We have images for the backend with plone-backend. And we have some uh, example images for you to use the new frontend, plone-frontend. Also, uh, over the next few days, we are going to, to release some uh, images for you to use in, uh, in testing environments or in CI. So it's going to be probably plone-test in a way that you have everything you need to run your tests with a plone in a Docker image. Besides that, we are uh, providing you with Ansible playbooks, showing you how to create a new uh, setup, a new server, deploy plone in there have everything uh, up and running in no time. And also, we are recommending a way, if you want to do it by yourself, we are recommending a new way of installing Plone, basically installing the backend of Plone with uh, pip. So you do pip install Plone and pass an argument just to have all the, the correct versionings uh, versions. And uh, that's that's the way we are going to go from now forward, is be uh, more and more friendly to the rest of the Python environment. And then you should ask, what about build-out? We still support build-out. Build-out is the preferred way for core developers to develop for Plone. But for, but for everybody else, we recommend you to basically use pip. So installing Plone with pip, is uh, easy as you create a new virtual environment with uh, Python uh, venv in here, you can see, and then you pip install plone, and then you pass the version with the uh, constraints, minus C, the constraints. Then you create a new uh, plone instance with uh, make with the instance minus D pointing to the current director. You can you have many other uh, common line options. So you can already create with the right user and password and so on and so forth. And then you start clone with a Bing run with the endpoint to etc zope, uh, zope dot, uh, ini. So, so far so good. And how do I, Use that with Docker. How is Plone with Docker? Plone with Docker is simply Docker run, uh, and then you minus IT to, to keep it running. And then you have the port forwarding, porting a port 880, 8080 to 880 in localhost. So it's Plone slash Plone dash backend uh, 
six zero zero alpha four. You can even try that with, uh, uh, I believe, from five to three upwards. We are releasing new images uh, every single time we we go with a new release of clone. So you can already test. You can find more about this in hub.docker.com slash r slash plone slash plone backend. And, but this is basically the, the stuff that uh, the developers and the CSA means like, uh, what about what made plone famous? It's user experience. From time to time, we've been working on that. We've been uh, reviewing that. So, if you if you think about this, Plon is not Plon Sex is not going to be different. First thing is we are going to ship you with two different front end options, two different uh, user uh, experiences. One is what we call the Plon Classic. That's uh, uh, evolution of the current Plon Five user interface that we call uh, Barceloneta. And we are going to have the default user interface that we nicknamed Voto. There's a, a lot to, to, to learn about those two. We are going to have a bunch of presentations during Work Plan Day. Go to our YouTube channel. You're going to see stories about both so you can take a look and uh, know a little bit more about that. So first thing is uh, for the Plon classic UI, hello Bootstrap 5. As you know, Plon, uh, uh, Barceloneta, uh, the UI for Plon 5 was based on Bootstrap already. We are upgrading to uh, the long-term support version of Bootstrap, the newest that's, Plon, uh, that's Bootstrap 5. To do so, we have lots of work done, cleaning templates, updating the whole team. And we moved from less to uh, SCSS as the basis for the, the whole uh, organization of style sheets. Besides that, we modernized views and forms. We now have inline SVG icons that uh, support easy customization. We modernize every single line of JavaScript we have in the user interface. Uh, they, in the past, they used require.js because that was what we had when we released from 5. But now we are using uh, everything is ES6 based. And uh, soon we are going to release on NPM uh, the plon, uh, at plon slash Barcelonita uh, team. So you can build on top of that. This, uh, as I said, this is a long support, uh, a long term support uh, version of Bootstrap. We are happy to have this one. It's going to be supported at least for five years. So we have something to, to rely on. And really important is faster than uh, the current uh, user interface in Plum. But let's take a look. So here, Let's go. This is the look and feel. It looks exactly like the current version. This is a 600 Alpha 4. It's my first time testing it. OK, first thing you can see, the toolbar has, uh, has been revamped, right? You can have it in here. All the structure is a little bit different now. I find it uh, more minimalistic, more simple. It's easier to, to work with it. But all the things you had, like uh, manage portlets and so on and so forth, they are here, right? Uh, so if you want to edit something, you have a cleaner user interface. Everything has been rewritten from scratch in here. All the 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 widgets and so on and so forth. And we have a new version of Tiny MC in here you can play with. Besides that, if I come here, we also have a new uh, control panel. You can see everything is 
with a nice look and feel with uh, uh, using SVG icons for everything, right? The whole teaming has been uh, I think, uh, I thought from uh, from scratch. We have the 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 same approach, so you can play with uh, team through the web, customize, and so on and so forth. But in the end, it's a complete revamp of the UI of uh, Clone, and that's honestly that's really good, as you can see in here. 600 alpha 4 it's quite uh, uh, it's quite the latest uh, release so i invite you all to take a look and test this as soon as possible it's here to stay this is the preferred way for everyone that's actually that actually has uh, if you have an existing clone site if you want to upgrade to clone 6 this is the easiest way you basically do a in-place upgrade, and then you need just to adjust your team to be compliant with uh, Plum 5. But the whole idea in here is for you to, to easily move from Plum 5 to Plum 6 and keep working with uh, uh, the latest release of Plum. Really important, if you want to do that, just make sure you are already running on Python 3. OK, so let's get back here. So that was the classic UI. We are going to have other community members, uh, Peter Holt, uh, Jens Klein. I believe Asko uh, also is going to present a talk. So you can uh, go there and go in deep to understand what we are offering here in terms of uh, a new user interface, right? I would also uh, invite you to, to go to 6classic.demo.plon.org. You can go there, take a look, play with it. But uh, let's talk about the new thing, a new user experience for Plone. This is not something that we came up as a community over the last uh, three months. This is a project that uh, has been de uh, being developed since 2017 or 2018, is the idea of having a complete uh, rewrite of the Plone user interface with uh, uh, playing with the latest React, uh, the latest JavaScript and React. So this is a new way to develop for Plone. This is a way that's more attractive to attractive and approachable for developers that come from JavaScript to Word. The, thing, uh, the things we did in here, first thing, the whole user interface was developed based on a design system. We do have a design system, and uh, it's called Pastanaga for the Plone 6 version. And we already have a uh, evolution of that that's called Quanta, that's uh, bit by bit being merged into the current uh, UI of uh, Plon6. Also, we went to, uh, uh, to have an approach of providing a really flexible way for you to build the user interface using a blocks engine. So you can have image on top, on bottom, and you can have grids and so on and so forth. That's really important. And on top of that, this leverage, leverages the Plone REST API. That's uh, uh, an important point. We start building the REST API back in 2014 or 13, and now we are uh, uh, the REST API is uh, or basically the the prime time of Plone. Everything we thought was to make Plone even easier to use. If you work with Plone as a content management, you know how easy Plone is compared to other content management systems. But one uh, uh, recommendation we always heard was, yeah, Plone does way too much. Plone has way too many options. What about make it simpler? Give me access to the things I need up front. So in this example, you see how 
it's this new user interface. And then you have on the top left uh, corner in here, you have a toolbar. And the most important thing about this is I want to edit this content. You have this uh, pen with the nice blue border indicating to you that this is the most important thing you're going to do in here. But also you can hear, uh, you can see the content. Also you can add new content here. So we are trying to simplify the way people work with Plon. We need to give you focus to work on the important thing that's the content, right? In here, you can see also uh, when you're editing, you now have uh, on the right side a uh, sidebar for you to play with the content. For instance, in here, let's uh, let's uh, think about this image. You can change the alignment of the image. You can change the size, and it's all in one place, really easy. No more uh, 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 right button and trying to edit everything. In here, you have access. Of course, simplicity without uh, a little bit of power is nothing. So we are trying to bridge these two words. And also we have contextual toolbars, uh, especially if you're editing text, you select something, then you can have the bold italic, you can change, make this a header or add a link. So it's step-by-step -step, uh, better user interface. Also, we work with the concept of blocks. So uh, if you ever play with Gutenberg from WordPress or with the Medium editor, you start working and then you type a paragraph and then, okay, in the next one, I want to add a new uh, image here. We have this plus button I'm going to show you in the demo. You click image, upload the image, and then there you are. And Without much, uh, let's go to, to the demo. One important thing is the whole code I use for this demo is available on Collective. So it's github.com slash collective slash plon6 dash local demo or something like that. There's a link at the end of the presentation. But uh, let's take a look in here. This is the user interface of uh, uh, the look and feel of Plone 6 for an uh, anonymous user. Really important here, this is not the default installation. I already provide some, uh, uh, some content here. If you go to that repository I mentioned, you can see how it was done, right? So in here, I'm going to log in. Let's, here I am. As you can see, it's fast. In here, you have the user interface, the toolbar with the edit, and then in here, folder contents. In here, you can add new content, and everything else that you you want to do, you can do in here. So for some contents, you're going to have uh, sharing, and for other contents, you're going to have, oh, you can publish or unpublish this content, so on, so forth. Uh, so on, so forth. Let's take a look. Uh, besides that, we have many other pages in here. As you can see, we have examples of things. Text, video, but let's go back and I want to edit this page. My first time here, I click on edit. You can see this is when you see in here on the right document, you're seeing metadata about this document, right? There's a special integration for some blocks or long day 2022. This is a title because this is a title block, right? In here, I can select something here or I can select something here and then say, oh, this is, uh, is bold and, or not. I can add links easily in here. So if I want to add a link, click in here where I want to put the link. So let's 
long.org. Okay. For instance, uh, as you can see, we have different types of blocks. I want to add an image here, but I'm going to look for an existing image. I can upload one. If I upload one in here, let's take a look at this, uh, the, the badge. It's uploading. Okay, but uh, it's way too big, right? So I want this to be medium and I want this to be right aligned. Okay, I can even change the position of this to be after the, the header in here. And of course I can change the order of things if I want for some reason. And then that's it. Right, and every block you see has a different way of editing. This is a grid block. So right now we have four items here and for each one of them, I have a different approach. So I'm saving and ta -da, we have a new uh, image in here. I, I do not want to spoil all the other presentations about uh, this new user interface, but uh, as you can see, you can align images in many, many different ways. You can have videos, right? If you click in here, you have Timo talking at the plant conference in uh, Ferrara, and then different size of videos, alignments, and so on and so forth. But one interesting thing is the fact that the most popular add-on for Plone, and I, I dare to say the most popular uh, add-on for Plone ever was the uh, EA uh, faceted navigation. So now we have that as the, the uh, as default. I want to see, for instance, images in here. I see images. I can filter by astrophysics images and so on, or I can basically say, okay, I want uh, no filtering for content type. And uh, I want to see Plone. Is there something with Plone in here? No, Saka. I need better uh, uh, default uh, content here. But also, I, I was playing with the idea of having an image. I can even do like the same thing. I just want images here, but I want a different way of uh, displaying that. So I click here on the block. The results template I want is uh, image gallery. I save and voila. I change the way I display this. So for every block, you have different uh, options. In here, you can have a summary. You could have the default. That's the one we're using. You could uh, filter this pretty similar to what a, a collection would do. So you were free to play with uh, this on a default clone installation. So I highly recommend you you take your time to play with it a bit. So uh, coming back, and how do I create a new project with uh, uh, Plum 6 and React? I want to test this, but I want to, to see the code not only run Docker. So I can show you that basically we start with the Docker run minus D in here, you forward the port, you have the backend running, and then on the same folder, you basically create uh, with Yeoman, you need to have uh, Node.js 14, and you need to have Yeoman installed, but yo at plone slash voto, it's going to ask you a bunch of questions, including versions and so on and so forth. Finishes, yarn starts, and then you have uh, your JavaScript code 
running and accessing uh, the backend that's running on Docker. Really important is that Plum 6 is here already. We have many, many different sites using uh, this technology. Even though it's not the latest beta, it's everything that's composed of this. So you have uh, EA with forest.ea.europa.eu. You have also uh, the Osaka University developed by CMSCon in Japan. So uh, www.osaka-u.ac.jp slash yenor. Without the slash, you go straight to the, to the Japanese version. You have many sites developed by our friends at Red Turtle. This is one of them, the provinciapisa.it. Yeah, punto it. And then oh, uh, this is a personal one. I, this was my first plum sex with photo site, uh, MNS, mncr.org.br. It was developed even with an older version of uh, Voto, but we are going to upgrade that soon. So if you want to know more, first thing, we are revamping our documentation. Steve Percy is giving a talk about that during Work Plum Day. You can check, uh, check it out. But you can go to 6.dev-docs.plum.org. We always have our trainings, thanks to Philip, Katya, and all the amazing instructors we have. You have 6.demo.plum.org. You can go there and play with this. And uh, the code I use in here, it's uh, on github.com slash collective slash plum 6 local demo. It's basically a, a repo with a make file. You, you check it out. You need to have Docker run, uh, to, to run it, but then I believe it's uh, make run. You check it out, make run, and then you have access to, to, to this. You access with uh, six dot localhost or classic dot localhost. Besides that, I would, I would like to invite you to join us. If you use Plone, if you are interested in Plone, please take a time to go to community.plone.org and say hi and ask your questions. If you have any questions, we are happy to answer that. Also, github.com slash Plone. Uh, if you use Plone, also consider uh, donating for the or for the Plum Foundation sponsoring our work because this work is uh, this uh, all the sponsorship is used to uh, support sprints and to develop Plum. Also, uh, follow us on Twitter at Plum or join us in Discord discord.gg slash this amazing code in here. Thank you all. I hope you enjoy. It's, uh, it's a pleasure to talk about Plum 6. Plum 6 is a reality. It's here. You can already use in your projects. And if you have any questions, please uh, follow us. Go to community. Go to Discord. We are more than happy to, to help. Thank you all. Enjoy World Plum Day.